already won your Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. It's time for Friday Reads for the 20th of October. Thank you for the fact that no, none of you have complained about how my, the volume of my voice goes up and down. All my life people have complained about my soft spoken voice, so I'm going to try to work on that a little bit starting now, so I hope it doesn't turn me into a shouty old queen for this video. When I'm listening to my videos after they're up on YouTube, I'm turning it up and turning it down. And I'm going to try to work on that. I have lots to say. And uh, apparently I have lots of time within which to say it. So let's uh, go. I am going to run down basically everything I'm reading and doing on audio. A new book I've started on Kindle is the fifth novel by Barbara Pym. This one is called A Glass of Blessings, and it came out around uh, mid to late 1950s. I didn't double check that. The way I tried to describe Barbara Pym's first novel and that novel's protagonist in my Goodreads review was imagine a kind of frumpy, dowdy friend who's not as frumpy and dowdy as she thinks she is. She's actually really smart and pretty cool and hilarious, but you don't, you also don't want her to know that part of the time when you're laughing, you're not laughing with her, you're laughing at her. So that kind of a friend, we, we've all had that kind of a friend or aunt or or whatever, teacher. And that is a quintessential Barbara Pym protagonist. And the first novel, Some Tame Gazelle, just had me in stitches the whole time. And that there, it had a serious, there was a serious dimension to the plot as well. But the... <laughs> The spinster woman living with her sister, she just <laughs> cracked me up. And she didn't think she was being funny at all. So this is my fifth. So the intervening three novels didn't tickle my funny bone as much as that first one did. But this, A Glass of Blessings, is also really tickling my funny bone. So I read this first paragraph and almost peed myself. But... Quite possibly, it's highly likely that your sense of humor is very different than mine. So I'm going to read you this opening paragraph, and if it kind of catches you, Barbara Pym might be for you, because this, to me, is a scream. I suppose it must have been the shock of hearing the telephone ring, apparently in the church, that made me turn my head and see Piers Longridge in one of the side aisles behind me. It sounded shrill and particularly urgent against the music of the organ and it was probably because I had never before heard a telephone ringing in church that my thoughts were immediately distracted, so that I found myself wondering where it could be and whether anyone would answer it. I imagined the little bent woman in the peacock blue hat who acted as verger, going into the vestry and picking up the receiver gingerly, if only to put an end to the loud, unsuitable ringing. She might say that Father Thames was engaged at the moment, or not available, but surely the caller ought to have known that, for it was St. Luke's Day, the patronal festival of the church, and this lunchtime mass was one of the services held for people who worked in the offices nearby, or perhaps for the idle ones, like myself, who had been too lazy to get up for an earlier service. The uh, Japanese phrase for love at first sight is Hitome, Hitome Bore, Hitome's eye, eyes. So yeah, this is a Hitome Bore uh, opening uh, of this novel for me. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm about 5 or 10% into it. Another novel I've started this week, also on ebook, not that that really matters, is I believe it's a 2016 novel out of the UK by a British writer of Indian descent. I believe he was born in the UK. His name is Sanjeev Sahota, and the novel is called The Year of the Runaways. And I'm doing it for my Y book for the alphabetical reading challenge. And boy, do I ever love the writing. It's just really crisp and pulls me right in and gives me an almost instantaneous sense of the characters. I'm really impressed with it. So, again, my tastes quite possibly are 
different than yours, so I'm going to read you the short opening paragraph, and you can see for yourself whether you like this writing. Randeep Sangera stood in front of the green and blue map tapped to the wall. The map had come with the flat, and though it was big and wrinkled, and cigarette butts had once stubbed black islands into the mid-Atlantic, he'd kept it, a reminder of the world outside. He was less sure about the flowers, guilty-looking things he'd spent too long choosing at the petrol station. Get rid of them, he decided, but then heard someone was parking up outside, and the thought flew out of his head. So Randeep is about to welcome his bride in name only, who he married to get into the country, and she's coming to the flat that he has rented on her behalf, where they are going to pre be pre pretending to live together. And this is his anxiety, as because uh, he's also got a little bit of a hidden agenda that he hopes that the marriage might turn into a true marriage. But I just love that opening. It's just so vivid. I have finally started the audiobook of Trevor Noah's memoir, Born a Crime. I don't like memoir very much, but I had been told by about 2,562 people that I would love this, and especially on audio. And I agreed with them because I'm quite impressed by him, and I'm very interested in South Africa. So I'm finally doing it on audio, and it's wonderful. So that's all I'll say about that for now. And it would be a shame to read that book instead of doing it on audio, because he does all of the accents and uh, everything just so perfectly. Another African novel that I've started this week on audio is from Nigeria. I had thought, for some strange reason, I thought it was a South African novel, but nope. It's a Nigerian novel, as they all seem to be. Stay With Me by Ayobami Abadeo. I believe it was one of the nominees for the Bailey Prize this year, and I've heard fairly consistently good reviews of it. I'm doing it on audio. I'm not sure about the narrator. The narrator's, when she does, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone, but... The narrators, when she does a angry, scolding voice, she kind of scares me. So I have a little bit of trouble with her narration. I don't like getting scared, even if it is October. The novel so far sounds really good. Like it's, I'm enjoying the story. It's about a Nigerian woman who seems to be, for whatever reason, she and her husband haven't been able to have children. And even though they're a modern Nigerian couple who had no prior interest in bigamy, their parents, both her and the husband's parents, have convinced the husband to get a second wife just for the purposes of procreation. So that's the premise, and it's quite fascinating. Still working on this. I believe I'm about halfway through now. I got a little bit bogged down with a 65-page story in the middle called Especially Heinous, where Makado weaves a really strange story through every episode of Law and Order. So each paragraph has the title of the, the next consecutive episode of the TV program, and then she she's using the character of the two main detectives from Law and Order, and I, Part of my issue with this is I don't know that show. I've probably watched one and a half episodes. I hate police procedural dramas. Uh, it's just weird, and I actually bailed on... I got halfway through it and decided I could, could, I could skip it. So I've gone to this next story after that, and it seems to be really good. So for the most part, I'm really enjoying it. This is still wonderful. This is probably going to be one of my top reads of the month, for sure. It's so well written, and the story is so interesting. I've talked about it before. You haven't heard me mention this for a while, and that is not because I wasn't enjoying it. I'm just reading it really slowly. How to Be Both by Ali Smith. I'm about 81% in, so it would be lovely to finish it this weekend, but I probably won't. I seem to be my max with this book is 20 pages a day. And again, I'm loving it, but it's just it's a dense story, and there's just so much to think about. And 20 pages a day is about all I can handle, and most days it's 10. But I'm that is... I love savoring a really good novel. When I'm enjoying a novel, and especially if it's a chunkster, this one isn't, it's 300 pages, 350 pages, I 
tend to slow right down and try to stretch it out over at least two months or longer. So I've done that, for example, with the two, my two most favorite novels. Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tian and A, Vital, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. Both of those I read over two or three months. This one I'm going to do within a month, but uh, yeah, I'm taking my sweet time and enjoying it. I don't think this is a book that I'm going to do a formal review on because I'm not sure what I'm going to have to say about it. But maybe I'll... This might be the kind of book that I could review after sitting with it for six months after I have read it. Peg says that's what she likes when I talk about books I read a long time ago, so this might be the kind of book that I will do that with. But I'm certainly loving it. I am still doing the horror mo novel Bird Box by Josh Malaman on audio, and it's good. I don't like it because I don't like horror and I don't like genre fiction, but it is good. It's probably going to be a three-star read for me. I find my mind wandering when I'm listening to it, so I'm not really pulled in and freaked out like I was at the very beginning, but it's it's a good it's a good horror. It's so much better than that piece of crap witch novel I read. What was it called? By the hot Dutch author. I'll put it at the bottom. I I bitched about it. And I gave it its due. It was a scary, scary witch. But that still reading Mavis, the collected stories of Mavis Collant. I'm now on page 724. So that I've got just over 200 pages left to complete by the end of the year. So that's definitely doable. Uh, actually, some of her more modern stuff that I had never read before, I'm enjoying more than kind of her middle period. There was a few in the middle that I didn't care for, but boy, these last few have been just sharp. I love Mavis. The last book I'd like to tell you about is an Edith Wharton novella or short story. I read it as an, it was a 40 page novella that I read as an ebook, but it's probably really a long short story called Zingu. I had to read an X book for my alphabetical challenge and there aren't too many to choose from and I chose this and I thought I would just kind of rush through it so here's a little bit of a digression because I have time I studied Edith Wharton at university a graduate English course that was on James Wharton and Cather and my experience of grad school was so negative that it's turned me into a vehement anti-academic in terms of talking about English literature and turned me off of almost all of the writers or books that I read. It took me years after getting out of grad school before I could recover my love of reading. So it, yeah, it did a real number on me. And so that class, even I liked the professor for that class, but I still, I hate Henry James to this day. And I think that's a good thing. Like I'll probably keep that hatred, but... Uh, Edith Wharton. I didn't expect to love this, and I love this so much, Zingu. If you've ever been in a book group, or if you've ever been in a circle where there was a kind of a intellectual one-upmanship dynamic, this story is a scream. It's so well done. A group of snooty, upper-class New York ladies. The story was published in 1916. I assume the setting is around the same time. They've all got their noses in the air and they're all pretentious, especially intellectually and literarily pretentious. There's one new lady who they're considering letting into the club, but they're very skeptical about whether she is a good fit for the club. And there's all this uh, bitchiness between all the members. And they've invited an author of a I don't think it was ever clear in the story whether it was a novel or, or what it was, but a, uh, uh, the author of, a uh, female author of some book to come. And then the games just begin, and I won't say any more than that. You, you should, it's 40 pages. You can find it free online easily. Edith Wharton's story, Zingu. I loved it so much I just wanted to do a little dance after I finished it. It's really, really good and smart and funny. So, yeah, I also never enjoyed any of the Willa Cather I read in that graduate course. And everybody in the book world, book podcasts and Litzy, and I think even now on BookTube, I've been hearing such glowing, 
comments on Willa Cather. So I should try her again, because I read her because I had to, and my visceral enjoyment of literature was just gone during those years. So I want to try give Willa another chance. Henry James, uh, I think I'll pass. So that is my Friday Reads, and I hope you're having a lovely readerly Friday, and I look forward to hearing all about it in your own Friday Reads video or in the comment section below. Have a great day.